Jamaica, land of beauty, we promise faithfully to serve thee with our talents and bring our gifts to thee. A few of my favorite lines from the national song, Jamaica, land of beauty. Let's endeavor to serve our nation positively with our talents. Let's be the best versions of ourselves because that's the only way Jamaica can be the place of choice for us all. Thanks for joining us for this special edition of Jamaica Magazine as we celebrate 57 years of independence. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Stay with us. You will be hearing from not only me, but also the country's leaders. You don't want to miss what they have to say. So many wish they could visit our shores. We live where they vacation. Brand Jamaica beckons all from the four corners of the earth. Well, as a Jamaican, um, I have great pride in selling it. Um, you know, your pride, your, your pride that you sell Jamaica with is something that it rolls off. Jamaica has so much to offer, and every time I have the privilege of bringing an executive down to Jamaica, an executive from an airline or a, a tour operator or a travel agency, and you take them across the country, you know, the pride that they said, wow, I can't imagine, especially when it's their first time. Wow, I love this. Build it. Cherish it. Our wealth is Brand Jamaica. Up first is Governor General Sir Patrick Allen. He tells us why it's important to celebrate our achievements as an independent nation. Take a look. My fellow Jamaicans, I greet you warmly as we celebrate the 57th anniversary of our independence. This is a time when we reflect and give thanks for love, liberty, freedom, and nationhood. The theme of our independence celebrations this year, One Nation, One People, encapsulates the message that in spite of our differences, we must be united in our mission to build a peaceful and prosperous nation. The world around us is characterized by divisiveness, turmoil, and uncertainties. There are threats to the physical environment, growing intolerance of differences related to ideology, ethnicity, or culture. We are often disturbed and numbed by the flagrant disrespect for human life. However, Against these realities, we must remind ourselves that most Jamaicans represent the best of our wholesome traditions and values. Our citizens have benefited from a level of social responsibility without which our achievements would not have been possible. Our development and processes will therefore depend on how we build social cohesion and national unity. Jamaica experienced varying fortunes during the past years. There was cautious optimism about the improvement in the economy, the increasing employment rate, and the construction of the impressive road network. However, the inability to find a permanent solution to crime and violence, the many road fatalities, and the specter of human trafficking have threatened to overshadow the gains we have made. We therefore must renew our efforts to successfully overcome these challenges and maintain our vigilance in seeking success. I urge all Jamaicans to return to the values we know so well, such as respect, honesty, integrity, and patriotism, so that our country can flourish and celebrate many and more prosperous years of independence. At this special time, I urge you to take pleasure in the freedom preserved in our Constitution and God's blessings of freedom in thought and mind. Let us value and respect each other and our country. Let us pledge to give back to society and help those who are less fortunate than we are. As we approach our 58th year as a nation, I encourage each one of us to reflect on the maturity of a country which is on the move and resolve to chart our destiny with faith and courage. 
as our freedom song says, we are proud Jamaicans and our past we can't forget. For we know the strength which carried us through lives deep within us yet. God bless you and God bless Jamaica, land we love. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is next. The leader of government is challenging us to dig into our greatness to continue to make Jamaica that formidable nation. Watch this. My fellow Jamaicans, as we celebrate our 57th year of independence, we have much to be thankful for. We have the lowest unemployment rate in our history at 7.8%, and youth unemployment fell by 6%. The annual inflation rate is low and stable at 4.2%, and the consumer price index is trending downwards. Our credit ratings are positive, and our foreign exchange reserves are at historically high levels. We have had record-breaking tourist arrival for the last two years, exceeding 4.3 million visitors with an 8.6% increase in earnings for the industry. The deposit interest rate is at 3.2%, which is a record low. Our stock market continues to perform well, and the consumer and business confidence indices remain high. These are always good indicators of economic health. The construction industry is seeing sustained growth right across Jamaica, and particularly in Kingston, where we see new construction projects going up at a pace not seen in recent times. And the NHT is providing housing solutions for new homeowners like never in its history. By the end of this month, over 12,500 new housing solutions would have been provided to the market since 2017, and we have lowered interest rates for you. If you are an NHT contributor earning below $15,000 per week, you pay 0% on your mortgage. You can't get lower than that. If you earn between $15,000 and $30,000 per week, your mortgage rate is 1%. General mortgage rates are coming down steadily from double digits to now an average of 7.5%. We have also introduced the intergenerational mortgage to assist older persons and families to acquire a home. What better way to celebrate your independence than by having a chance to own your home? Many positive things are happening in Jamaica right now. There is much to celebrate on our 57th birthday. There is no question that at long last, Jamaicans can feel proud that we are using our political independence to secure our economic independence. However, I want you to know that I am under no illusion that all is well. Notwithstanding the great performance of the government, there is no room for complacency. There is still much work to be done and pressing issues to be resolved. Environmental issues are now of greater concern to Jamaicans, and they should be in the face of more frequent and intense droughts, shifting rain patterns, and more frequent and intense hurricanes. This government that I lead has taken more decisive actions in favor of our environment than any other government in our recent history. We aborted the Goat Island project. We rejected coal as an option for powering a bauxite plant in Jamaica. We have put in place an enterprise team to oversee the divestment and modernization of Jamaica's solid waste management systems which is at an advanced stage. We instituted a ban on some plastic items. We will shortly launch a deposit refund scheme for plastic bottles. Early in my term, I signed an order prohibiting clearing and slash and burn in watershed areas. We have undertaken several watershed rehabilitation projects, including the Yalas Hope Watershed funded by the IDB. We are now in stakeholder consultations 
to declare certain areas in Black River protected areas. Shortly, I will announce a massive tree planting program right across Jamaica. And most importantly, we have settled the boundaries of the cockpit country, which was unresolved for decades. In so doing, we considered the particular geological features of the area and the ecology and biodiversity which grows from it and depends on it, the forest and all that live in it. We also consider that the cockpit country is a water bank for Jamaica, storing vast volumes of the precious commodity in caves and caverns beneath it. Based on the technical advice of the experts and after consultations, the boundary of the area to be protected was decided. This is an important step in protecting this critical national asset for generations to come and ensures that there will be no mining or any other activity that could harm the environment in the protected area. The cabinet also took the further step to ensure that before any mining can be done in areas outside of and close to the cockpit country protected area, as defined, environmental impact assessment studies must be done. We are sensitive to the concerns raised about the cockpit country protected area, and we are also sensitive to the area surrounding and in close proximity to the cockpit country protected area. The government remains committed to protecting our environment and will only pursue projects that are environmentally sustainable. Another area of grave concern is corruption. At the heart of the issue is that corruption deprives resources from the poor and distorts and denies prospects for prosperity. An important part of the independence mission is to ensure that we build institutions that are transparent, meaning that they are open to scrutiny and accountable for their actions. This administration has taken decisive steps to create a robust anti-corruption framework and build strong public institutions where corruption cannot flourish. At the governance level, we have developed and are about to implement a new system for the nomination, selection, and appointment of board members of public bodies. This will ensure that only fit and proper persons with the best skills are allowed to guide our public bodies. At the investigative level, we have just completed the legislative process to give MOCA its administrative and operational independence. The government is providing the resources to build out their capacity to thoroughly investigate and build strong cases for prosecution. MOCA now has more than 300 cases either before the courts or in advanced stages. This administration passed the Integrity Commission Act and establish the Integrity Commission, which is now in the process of developing its new institutional structures. We have passed the new campaign financing regulations that gives effect to the law to ensure that our democracy is not captured by special interests and that corrupt interests do not have influence on our government's decisions. Ultimately, however, government must act in due process. And this government has acted. We have acted to separate those accused from the institution in order to create the space necessary for investigation and discovery. We have acted to review and identify systemic weaknesses that allow the corrupt act in the first place and make the necessary changes to prevent occurrences. We have acted to facilitate the work of the independent investigative and oversight bodies. There must be no cover up so that the strongest cases can be brought to the courts. And we have acted to build a culture of enforcement of the law. The anti-corruption framework established is still in its early stages and will definitely require more time and resources to become more effective. However, it is working. I'm confident that with the anti-corruption framework we have created and the institutions we have built to implement it, Jamaica will see appreciable improvement not only in the perception of corruption, but in the deterrence of corruption and the detection, investigation, and prosecution of corrupt acts. At 57, we are still a young nation 
The future is looking bright. We have achieved much, but there is still much more to be done. Hardships there are, but the land is green, and the sun shineth upon us as one nation, one people, under God, increasing in beauty, fellowship, and prosperity. Happy Independence Day, Jamaica. Leader of the Opposition, Dr. Peter Phillips, comes to us now with his Independence Day message. Take a listen. My fellow Jamaicans, as we celebrate the 57th anniversary of Jamaica's independence, we salute the patriots who built the national movement and laid the foundations of our nationhood. Independence Time also provides us with an opportunity to celebrate our culture and the achievements of our country and our people. We should always treasure the fact that we have remained a functioning democracy. Our charter of rights in our constitution provides every single Jamaican with protection against arbitrary arrest and detention and guarantees our basic freedoms. However, despite these real achievements, we must also recognize that there are still major challenges which confront us as a people and which require urgent and collective action. We are yet to construct the kind of inclusive economy or achieve the rates of economic growth necessary to give all our people a good standard of living. Too many Jamaicans are still earning at or below the minimum wage and barely surviving without a real stake in the land of their birth. Despite the gains that have been made in opening up our educational system, our society is still scarred by what I call the unequal apartheid system in education. This presently leaves the majority of our children without adequate preparation for survival and success in today's world. Many of the rights acquired over the years by our workers have either not been fully achieved or are being eroded. Despite the law providing equal pay for women, today our women are still only getting on average 60% of the pay for doing the same jobs that men do. Increasingly, some businesses are using the fiction of contract work to deny workers who are full-time in every other respect their rights. These workers are denied sick leave, vacation leave, maternity leave, and for the most part, have no pension rights. All of this contributes to an increasingly widespread view that life in Jamaica is not fair. Perhaps nothing highlights the emerging crisis caused by these circumstances more than the persistent high rate of murder and criminal violence. This creates a deep sense of fear and insecurity among Jamaicans. These high rates of crime set back our economy and places pressure on our communities. Worst of all, it spreads tragedy among our families. The problem has been with us for a long time, but it is getting worse. Nevertheless, I continue to believe in our capacity and potential as a people to successfully overcome the challenges that we face. It is that indomitable spirit 
that overthrew British colonialism. It is that indomitable spirit that laid the foundations of our independence. It is that creative and powerful capacity of our Jamaican people that has made us a cultural powerhouse across the world and has caused our athletes like Shelley and Fraser Price to overcome all challenges. In the same Jamaican spirit of never giving up and never giving in, my team and I have embarked on a campaign to mobilize the nation around solutions to our most pressing problems. We recently held a national consultation on crime and violence prevention. We brought together key stakeholders across academic, business, social, community, faith-based, diplomatic and political sectors. We also included experts in the field of violence prevention and national security to seek solutions to this, our most pressing national problem. This meeting was just the first step. We will be sharing the recommendations with the government and other stakeholders as we work towards a national consensus that will enable us to overcome this threat to our country. In addition, we will be organizing public discussions across the country on our new policy proposals. We have plans to reimagine education and training and change our mindset. We have workable plans to create a legal pathway to a land title so every Jamaican can own a piece of this rock. We have real plans to drive sustainable and meaningful economic growth, which is the empowerment of business at every level. We have identified the critical funding to help people start up new ventures as micro and small businesses. We have plans also to help these businesses to grow to medium size and for medium sized businesses to grow to big. This growth cycle has to be maintained and facilitated by an active government. This is the road to economic independence of our people. So today as we enjoy this showcasing of the best of our popular culture and welcome relatives and friends from abroad to join in this celebration, let us also use the opportunity to reflect on our journey thus far and ready ourselves for the task ahead. May God grant Jamaica his continued blessings and continue to crown our efforts to build a better Jamaica with success. Have a happy and safe Independence Day. The Jamaican flag is unique. It is one of, if not the only flag in the world, that does not have the color blue or red in it. The flag represents the people and the land. Next, we hear from patriotic Jamaicans on their love for the black, green, and gold. I've traveled all over the world and I've seen the Jamaican flag in so many different countries and it gives me a sense of pride. Representing my country and seeing the flag means everything to me. It's an honor playing for the national team. I've migrated for 19 years and have been living in the U.S. But there is no greater joy knowing how it has the power to connect us and bring us in the diaspora together. For me, the Jamaican flag is a language and it includes me in the conversations. When the Olympics start and um, I see the flag waving, it will mean a lot to us. Sunday, August 5, 1962, two minutes to midnight. The new flag was about to be hoisted over the national stadium. The lights were replaced by darkness as if to expunge the horrid memories of the last 300 years. The red, blue and white Union Jack did its last wave and then it was lowered, gently tugged down the flagpole by a representative from the Jamaican militia. 
it had flown its course a long 307 years, and the replacement was the black, green, and gold, our very own Jamaican flag. The Jamaican flag was approved by government the 6th of August, 1962. It is important to know that a flag is a symbol which identifies a country. It started on a very sad note in war, times of war, people need to identify with a symbol. So where you are standing, you would know that's my side. So the enemy could take away the flag and then you would be ambushed and then get hurt. But on a joyful and peaceful note, our flag was established in 62 for our signal um, symbols. There was a very active competition and there were many persons who would want to associate with the design and so an approval was given. Looking at the flag is diagonal in gold and there are four triangles, the top and the bottom green and the others black. The gold, you know, represents sunshine, you know, happiness, you know, or people, no matter, no matter if we're going through hardship, we're always smiling. And the green is for our hope and agricultural resources. And the black then in 62 means hardships they are. And that was changed by government in 1997 with a committee um, presided over by Professor the Honorable Rex Nettleford. So it was changed to mean the creativity of the people. The flag has its protocol. It's never to be put on the ground. And it is placed to the right when you're on the platform. Of course, with athletics international competition, you'll notice people are wrapping the flags all over them. Years ago, that was unheard of because it's a solemn signal. When the national anthem is played or sung, you look in the direction of the flag. We are proud of our flag, and wherever we see it, there are some of us who still bow as respect to our dear country. When I'm overseas and I see the flag, I feel proud because, you know, not every country is at a big tournament. Not everyone will have their flag flying high. Our flag is so special because it unites our people wherever in the world we are. When I look down on the flag, it makes me feel proud as a Jamaican to know that I've been able to, to serve my country. So yes, the Jamaican flag gives me a voice. We also have deaf athletes going to represent Jamaica in other countries. And when other countries see our flag, you know, they feel proud and we feel proud as Jamaicans. The Jamaican flag represents pride to me. The other day someone said we should have a Caribbean flag and we said we already have one, it's the Jamaican flag. <laughs> Jamaican flags, it represents me, it represents you, it represents every Jamaican. We're no longer subjects of colonialism, directed by the orders of the British, but free citizens of our very own country. Oh, Green Isle of the Indies, Jamaica, strong and free. Our vows and loyal promises, O oh, heartland, tis to thee. The magazine closes for today, but please visit our social media pages. We're just a click away. You may also download our app to be notified of our latest stories and features. Don't forget to give us a like or leave a comment on our pages. Until next time, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Happy Independence, Jamaica. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica.